a little bit of a new hobby that I've begun to pick up uh, during the last part of December is photography. Well, where did it all start? That's basically the main thing. Well, this is what it started with. My dad's old Nikon F801 camera. It's an SLR camera and this has a little bit of a peculiar story. This was locked away in a cupboard during the entire 90s. We never used it. It was never used. And uh, so... I usually heckled my parents and said, Can we use that press photography camera? Because that's the only reference you had as a young boy. But no, no one, used, no one dared use it. Because it was too expensive and it was too, you know, too complicated in a way. So, I just dug through an old closet and I found this and I thought, why is this just sitting here not doing anything? So me and my dad, we, I finally heckled him into that we should buy a new camera because the, this thing is over 20 years old. It, for Christ's sake, this is older than me and we haven't gotten a new camera and why haven't we gotten a digital camera that is, you know, capable of producing some good pictures? I see people all around us are not taking pictures with anything else than their smartphone. So why not get a camera that actually takes great pictures? So we got together and we went and bought this. The Nikon D7200. We got this because also I do a little bit of photography for my martial arts classes. The added buffer space in this particular camera actually makes it very good if you're gonna do a long shoot of uh, action. I mean, what made us buy this over the 7100, uh, excuse me, was that added buffer space. The new and the old. So, what do you need then with the cameras? Well, you need lenses. But before that, I needed some inspiration on how do you work this camera and how do you take good digital photography? Well, I'll show you. I got actually two books on the subject. First book we got... Tony Northrup's Stunning Digital Photography. I got this on Amazon and it's a great read. And also to it, the to Tony Northrup's Photography Buyer Guide. This is, uh, it's a lot of grammatical mistakes and so on, but the information in the book, information in it, it's really great. It's really good. So if I would recommend two good books to get you started in digital photography, it would basically be these two. Stunning Digital Photography and Buyer Guide. Well, since we have this old uh, 801 in the closet, we also had some uh, old lenses for it and some old gear. For instance, we had the old speed light. This is an SB20. As you can see on the back, it was available with automatic, manual, manual and TTL mode. The TTL doesn't really work with a digital camera of today's standard, but the manual mode works great and this this little guy just works. It just works. So that's a piece of old technology that still uh, still hangs in there. Also, an old lens that we already had with the 801 was the Nikkor 35 to 70, uh, 3.3 to 4.5, depending on the zoom you're using. And this is an old Nikkor autofocus lens. This is basically, during Christmas, when the entire family was here, this is basically the lens I use to take some family pictures. Everybody needs some sort of zoom lens. This is also my dad's old. It's a Sigma APO 70 to 210. And uh, bear in mind that it, because the 7200 is a crop sensor, it, it's an APS-C sensor, uh, everything is uh, cropped to a factor of 1.5. And of course this also came with a lens hood. So these two lenses, we already had these two. Kit lens that came with the camera when we bought it. 
it's the Nikkor DX VR 18 to 140 millimeter, 3.5 to 5.6 depending on zoom. And it's one of those with the internal focusing motor, so you have VR, which is vibration redu uh, reduction, and uh, automatic or manual focus. I usually have it in manual because this lens, well, it's good for what it is, but I use this primarily for IR. I have an IR filter put on, on this lens. Even though the camera isn't modified to take IR photos, you can still get a fairly decent result with this lens and an IR filter on it. But then when you start to look around on YouTube, well, if I'm gonna plug some channels, it would probably be the Northrop's channel. Uh, every Thursday they have their Tony and Chelsea live. I would really recommend anybody interested in photography to look at their channel. Uh, then you have uh, the Aussie from Down Under that also likes seafood, Matt Granger. Really enjoy his channel and he has some fairly good advice on the channel and his exploits and also where to get great seafood. So really enjoy Matt Granger's channel as well. The Fro, the you know, Jared Poland. He, pretty good videos but uh, take everything with a grain of salt but when you want to know anything about old lenses that are still great for what they are really enjoy the angry photographer a little bit politically incorrect person but seems to give sound and great advice so yeah next thing I got was actually from the buyer's guide by Tony Northrup and it was actually to get a a great a flash to be able to take some because the speed light is good but I want something where I could actually turn the flash to you know shine behind me something that uh, Toby and Christina does a little bit if you look up um, uh, Tony Northrop's channel Tony and Chelsea's channel they have actually a TC live when it was TC plus TC live. So it was Tony Chelsea and Toby and Christina. They did something about wedding photos, I believe. But anyway, it's the uh, Young Nuo Speedlight, the uh, 568EX. And um, this flash has actually served... It's great for what it is. It's great. You can use it in most of the modes like TTL, manual, automatic, and so on. But you can also use this as a slave flash. So because the because the uh, 7200 has a built-in pop-up flash, you can actually use the pop-up flash to trigger this flash. And what I've heard about this uh, is that it's a little bit finicky when it comes to batteries. So what we're using in this, since I'm Swedish, we have a chain store chain that is a little bit like uh, Radio Shack. And uh, let's see who can... Yeah, they're called Klaus Olsen's. And this is, a, this is their rechargeable batteries. And these are rated at uh, 2,300 milliamps. And they seem to work great in this flash. It, it works good. What do we have next here in my, among my gear? Well, it was Black Friday for not so long ago. And uh, I managed to get this... Uh, Sam Yang lens. It's the Sam Yang 8mm 3.5 fisheye. So as you can see it's a fisheye lens and it's a little bit of an acquired taste I'm sure but for what it is it takes really interesting photos. This is one of those lenses that can make the ordinary extraordinary because it gives you a new perspective because it's a super wide angle and this is the mark II of the version so it has the chip that talks to the camera even though it's still a manual focus lens you can still uh, control the aperture from the camera so you don't have to use this on the lens you can use the, one, the control on the camera this is probably one of those things those times when you buy something and you think oh my god what did I just buy I went to a local flea market uh, something like the Salvation Army almost 
and they had this lens in a cab cupboard and it was cheap and I thought well I'll have a look at it and it turned out I, I looked at it and I thought well this is a Nikon F mount but being a noob it was actually a Pentax K mount which is basically a mirror image of a Nikon mount but anyway I bought the Pentax adapters that can so you can use Pentax lenses on a Nikon body so this is what I bought it's the Vivitar uh, 70 to 210 and when I started to do some research on this lens it has a constant aperture no matter where in the zoom range you are and it has a dedicated micro setting so this takes great macro photography actually I wouldn't say it's maybe not a full macro but for what it is it's brilliant and a little thing that I found when I did research about this lens on the internet it turned out that if you look at the serial number it starts with 22 and the metal and the lens cap is metal and it's a constant aperture no matter where in the zoom range you are this is a first generation this was made in five different in reincarnations where the first and third was apparently the most sought after this is a first generation that was actually made apparently I read with the help of a NASA optics engineer and that must count for something doesn't it so this lens actually is a great for doing extreme close-ups so when you do extreme close-ups you need maybe a flash for extreme close-ups like this the Sunpak Auto DX12R this was a uh, find on uh, a Swedish version of eBay called Tradera and you fit it on the uh, front of the lens just as the same as you put on a uh, lens filter you have these uh, things that you actually screw on instead of the lens filter and they are different sizes a 52, a 55, 62 and a 67 millimeter and these actually fit on the lens and then you put the uh, the macro flash on it so there you have it and of course as you eagle eye viewer it might see that this camera doesn't have a strap on it I didn't really like the uh, Nikon standard strap it felt a little bit you know ordinary and you have to stand up out a little bit so I got the uh, slide strap from Peak Design and I got the blue version well yeah as uh, one of the youtubers I have mentioned earlier said it looks a little bit like a seat belt but I'm I'm really happy with it it's really great and then I wanted to do some uh, moon photography and also my mother is a bird watcher and she wanted me to take some be able to do some bird pictures so you need some good telefocus lens and I looked around a little bit and I managed to get this one for not that much this was a bargain for me at least it's the Tokina 400 prime lens with a 5.6 to 22 aperture great lens for the money yeah 400 millimeter prime it has a built-in tripod mount that is swingable so you can sway it round yeah and uh, built-in metal lens hood makes it to a fairly long lens but I've taken some test pictures of the moon through my bedroom window actually and this lens is actually good for what it is it is good just because something is old it doesn't mean it's worthless this is old and good well and also when it comes to that something that is old and something that might be a little bit awkward it can still be good everybody said that okay you have all of these lenses but 
One thing you seem to be lacking in your collection is a 50mm prime. You need a nifty 50. And I started to look around and I said, well, I don't want to pay this much for a lens that is just 50 millimeters. And then I found this on eBay from the Ukraine. And it's this little chap here. It's the Helios 81H. And for a uh, old made in USSR lens, it's great. And it goes to from aperture 2 to 10. One thing I've heard about these lenses is that the uh, the aperture can be a little bit, the aperture blades can be a bit stiff, but this one is good. No problem at all. So if anybody's out for a manual 50 millimeter, give this one a try. They're not that much money and for what for what it is, it's great. Well, I did actually do a derp when I bought one lens. And I'm going to have this sent away to have it converted because I know you, you can do that. It's an old lens, but it's really premium quality. This one. It's the Nikkor 135 3.5 aperture. It goes from 3.5 to 32 in aperture. And you eagle-eyed viewers might see down here that, oh no, he didn't. This is a non-AI lens. Well, that's when you're naive and stupid and buy something without doing your proper research. But after doing research, I found out that these lenses are you're able to convert them. Because this slit, slit down here, you can actually send it away or do it yourself. I'm going to send it away because I'm not comfortable with doing this myself. You can actually cut a groove into this piece of the lens and you will actually have converted it from non-AI to AI. So this is this is going to be used. It's going to be sent off and be converted. And it also came with a detachable metal lens hood. Also, of course, Nikon. Since I bought that for that one thir uh, 135 and I thought, okay, I have goofed up. I actually bought this as well. It's the Tokina RMC-135, and this is also a 2.8, and it's uh, great, it's also, it has a built-in metal lens hood, and uh, it takes great pictures. As you can see, this is an AI lens, but just because something is old, it doesn't mean it's not good. Now we come to the final lens, and this was actually a uh, holiday gift from me to my father. A little bit of backstory. I'm Swedish, but my parents got married in New York City. Not far from Rockefeller Center, there is a Swedish church in New York City. And my parents got married there. A couple of years ago, we actually went back and did New York 25 years later. But anyway, when they were in New York City, they looked for this fabled photo store. It was called 47th Street Photo. And it was basically that you went into an apartment building and it was, you know, very obscured. Only people in the know knew about this store. And uh, my aunt's ex-husband, he, he purchased a, pa a camera there. But my dad always bet beat himself up that he never bought anything. The final day they found the store and he beat himself up that he didn't buy anything from that store. So, as a Christmas gift for him this year, I actually bought this lens for him. And I know this is a bit of a gimmicky lens. I believe that it has its place and it also is because, as I said before, my mother is a bird watcher and she wants maybe my father to take some bird pictures for her. 
first of all I'll just show you this this is a T mount adapter so it's threaded on the inside and it's a Nikon bayonet F type bayonet mount on the back side okay so the lens is a well it's a T type lens and it's this thing bought from photo 47 it's the Optica mirror lens it's a constant 8 aperture it's it's its only aperture it's a 72 diameter I'll show you if you unscrew the lens cap on the front I know that mirror lenses kind of fell out of fashion because of the bokeh or bokeh of the lens but I don't think you should diss on these maybe for wildlife this can be good yes it's manual focus but manual focus has been around for over almost a hundred years and uh, if you want to see a good video about mirror lenses and also photo photography in general I would also want to plug Philip McCordell's channel Philip McCordell he is, an, uh, he is apparently a retired product photographer and he did a great uh, video about a mirror lens similar to this one and uh, like him I also with my lens I got the uh, times two converter so it actually turns this lens into a thousand millimeter lens so it's a great it's actually a good telephoto lens and uh, when I got these I think it was this lens when I bought this Tokina I actually got this as well from the same seller it's a set of uh, lens filters I mean, I know some people diss on these, but they're actually quite nice. A red, blue, yellow, green, so all the prime colors, more or less, except green, which is blue and yellow. What is this then? Well, some skylight filters and so on, but I got these. These were cheap. They were about, you know, five, ten dollars for this set, so it was a bargain. Yeah. And, uh, well, if you're going to accessorize, as I mentioned before, I took moon pictures with the 400 and also with the 500, with the extension tube. But when you do that, you can't really press the shutter by yourself, because that vibration will show up on the photo. First of all, I used this. This was an old flea market. This was an old flea market find a tripod made in Germany so I can recommend going to flea markets because they have some great stuff that you can get and also another piece of accessory for the flash I don't have the off-camera flash triggers but I have this it's an Optica cord so you can actually have one flash on your camera and you can have one flash that is off-center so I can have the uh, I can have the speed light for the ca the Nikon speed light on the camera, and I can have the young no tethered offside. So this was a, actually quite a useful little accessory to use multiple flashes on the on the cheap. But finally, for taking moon shots and so on, when you need when you need a long exposure or that you have such a zoom in that you need to eliminate shake this just a Chinese little wire trigger and you can put this for long exposures and so on if you do bulb mode photography or mirror up photography which, which I use so this thing plus mirror up mode on the camera it, it equals fairly decent pictures. Well, also, 
if you look at McCordell's channel, Philip McCordell, you will also see that photographers can actually do a lot of great things with simple household items. Like, for instance, I have a small flashlight here. And if I illuminate something, you can get... So, small flashlight, indispensable tool for photographers. Yeah, a surplus store in Finland, I actually got this here. It's a Militech TL122 flashlight. It's a it's a uh, diode flashlight, LED flashlight with five LEDs. And also in the bottom here, it came with in the bottom it comes with this assortment of uh, filters. So this is also a great thing to have as a photographer. And uh, this is basically my photo photography gear to this moment in time. And the camera that started it all. My dad's old Nikon F801 that I never got to use really as a young kid. But now my dad and I have gotten a real digital camera and this is the gear that we use to take photography today. And also if I'm going to leave you with a last tip it's actually that you might find photography equipment where you least expect it. Well finally this uh, I'm using my old Canon Handycam now to take this uh, video but in the future I'm actually going to use the D7200 to do video even though the D7200 has a built-in microphone that is stereo nonetheless, I thought you need something a little bit more, with a little bit more oomph to it. And I know there is Röd from Norway and all these Sennheisers and so on, but I basically I found this. An Opteca. I think this is called the Opteca M. MV200 and it's a active stereo condenser mic. It takes a 9 volt battery to run it. Let's see if I can do this on camera. Yep. Yeah. Here we go. It takes a 9 volt battery and in the future, when you see my videos, it's probably going to be the D7200, excuse me. So there you go. This is my photography gear as of the end of 2015.